there was a girl in the community that was doing what we call pumping, and that's basically black market injectables. Hello, beautifuls. Welcome back to my Chanel, and welcome to another episode of Botched. No, not today. I'm off medication. An unhinged plastic surgery reality TV correction show in which we have to ask ourselves, is it time for a brow lift? Time for a brow lift. Oh. Yeah. Starring your girls, Dr. Paul Nassif and Dr. Terry Dubrow of the Browlift Swan fame. In the last video in this series, we finished season one. But my lovelies, this series, season two, has quite a lot of characters that you may have seen like in the news and... Well, just kind of perhaps up to some nefarious deeds. And I'm quite excited to see that today, my lovely. So, with that being said, let's not beat around the wig. And let's get right into it, shall we? Do you want a top comment from the last episode? I know I do, girly wigs. And that is by Let's Sing the Doom Song. That's nice, yes. The Doom Slayer. And they say, I love your no-nonsense input about surgery. It's really the only attitude to have towards it, considering it's not exactly makeup that you can easily remove and redo with a clean slate. And you know, I actually agree. I try to give a very accurate depiction of plastic surgery on this Chanel, both with my own and by watching on these shows, because it's kind of difficult sometimes to really see what is real when you are presented with such a sanitized version and shortened version of what it is. Plastic surgery and the, and the healing therein can be quite dark. When I had my facial feminization surgery, I filmed a documentary for it and very much of the same thing. There were some dark times in that. that kind of need to be shared. You can only make good decisions when you know all the information. Let's put it that way, my loves. Right, are you ready? Make sure you're sitting comfortably. Sit down, sit down, mummy show you, mummy do it. Grab yourself a beverage. Today it's pink energy again for me, but I might also switch halfway through for some creme de la sodrice. I do like cream soda. Mm. Pop your ochinger right into your little botched hole and let's watch. Time for a brow lift. My breast augmentation. Oh, I wanna be sexy. Oh, Oh, we've got a new intro. Da, 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 da. I feel like I want to try and rein in the unhingedness with the intro. Oh my God! Hey what everybody. did I just say? I'm oh, Tiffany Pollard, aka New York. They were old maiden type of shoes. My breasts are jacked up. Oh goodness the saggy, me! The extra skin. My oh. breasts are unhappy. That was, I mean, I was literally like 12 seconds into the episode and we're just full titties out on a Tuesday, girly wigs. Okay, so Tiffany New York, Tiffany Pollard of the Pollard dynasty, Tiffany New York wigs. She is here to have corrective surgery on her breasticles. I grew up in upstate New York upstate? being the granddaughter. Is there a downstate New York? Life was very shelter for me. Oh, just shelter. pretty much church, school, and home. I just never felt like I fully fit in. So I found my escape it's watching television and saying, bitch, one day you will be somebody. But one She's quite day iconic, isn't she? In many, 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 many different realms. Like, is she problematic? Is New York problematic? I feel like she's got this kind of cult status within the uh, queer community specifically because she's iconic, but also like, bitch in the good way. And Geraldo Rivera, and I saw Dolly Parton oh, walk out on stage. And when I saw that white chick come on the screen, you know, with her blonde hair, her tiny waist, and her big tits, I said, that's gonna be me one day. I love where I'm from, well, but I always she felt did it. like I was destined for greater things. So I knew I would leave. And a this year is quite later, a heartwarming introduction. On Hollywood isn't it? Boulevard, Hollywood and the week. rest is history. I'm the original queen of reality television. Y'all remember Who gave me her from the flavor of love. I love scepter. New York. New York goes to work. Hollywood. Well, you guys saw me on Flavor of Love, flat chested, flat chested. I was nothing but nipple. It wasn't enough. Nothing so but nipple. So when I got my own show, I went to Beverly Hills. Is that where she's from, Flavor of Love? Because I've got that in my watch list for potentially reacting to on this Chanel. If anyone's interested in it, I've never seen the of love scenarios. I know there was Rock of Love, Flavor of Love, and there's some pretty iconic memes that have come out of it as well. I consulted with one of the finest doctors oh. and he told me that I can go as big as I wanted to go. So I let him go super huge Ooh. on my combs. 
When I woke up, I was in so much pain and discomfort and realized that it's like one tit is in Africa and the other one is in Europe. This tit right here feels like oh, a damn. bowling ball. It's tight and it's hard, but this one is really saggy and disgusting. I felt Saggy like I got and cheated. Disgusting. We're getting a bit of an interesting story here where she said that she's gone to one of the best surgeons and he's botched her. Now, this could be one of those things where even the best surgeons have incidents happen, should we say? Sometimes something, you know, everyone's different. Sometimes something doesn't necessarily go to plan. And sometimes you get butchers who for lack of a better phrase, like aren't that professional, if that makes sense. I said it before, I'll say it again. I feel like you can only be really called a professional when you can fix something that's gone wrong. Otherwise it's just following instructions. If the doctors are gonna give me what I'm looking for, Side I feel person. like they could really give me the edge that I need that's for very the my next space. stretch of my career. Okay. Now it's time so for this me is about to become the next step I in her career with her new breast. Ever since I was a kid. I have to have this. There's no other way. My name is Rasheen. Oh. I'm 47 years old oh. from Hollywood, Florida. And I wanted to be Cinderella. Instead, I became Cinder Blockerella. <laughs> Oh dear, I wonder if they fed that line to her. I know this woman, not personally, but I've covered her story before on the Chanel. This is a really shocking story. And it's quite interesting to see how we've got like two individual stories playing out at the same time, rather than like introduced to someone, are they sorted? Next person, next person. You know what I mean? Like we're getting introduced to everyone and then we're probably gonna have the entire episode. That's an interesting way to do it. But this is a really extreme case. And uh, let's watch because I've got some things to say. <laughs> About the age of four is when I started to feel like I wasn't like the other boys. My G.I. Joe doll was never going to war. He was always coming home to me and I was taking care of him like a good little wife. But the odd thing is, I the never Bobby realized film. I was trans growing up. I just thought I was an effeminate gay male. And when I got in my early 20s is when I really started to connect the dots. But there was a period where I lived androgyny. I was still wearing like male clothing, but they were the most feminine male clothing I could find. Oh, this and is like mirroring a my story very much. And then in my mid 20s is when I started to do the hormones. I started buying women's clothing and doing like hair pieces and weaves. But then after a while, that wasn't enough. Like I felt like, God, I still need to feminize more. There was a girl in the community that was doing what we call pumping. And that's basically black market injectables. Well, I knew she wasn't a doctor, but I did think that she had some sort of medical training. She said that she did. I started with my cheeks and I had injections also around my jawline. And then 10 to 15 injections on each breast going around each session. Initially, I looked great. Okay, I have to step in here because this, she's a victim of the specific back alley uh, black market silicone injection person who was also putting concrete in people. Absolutely unhinged story. And I've covered it here before. She's in prison now, I believe. She might have actually also passed away. I can't quite remember. It's been a little while since I've looked at the story, but it was so, so, so shocking. I do want to kind of put this into context though, because it's easy to ask like, well, why would you do that? Why would you do that? It's obvious that that's wrong. Gender dysphoria and surgical transition can be so debilitating sometimes, utterly debilitating. And you need to listen to older transsexuals when they explain the world that they grew up in where doctors didn't even want to operate sometimes on trans people because of the stigma in the industry. And if it got out that they were, you know, into doing all this abomination surgery, my God, that's what it really was like. So people quite often looked within the community and there's bad people in every community who are willing to make money from you whilst also shortening your life. They're just are. There's bad, bad apples in every bunch, girls. When you have really limited options that are limited by people and willingness and money and socioeconomic status, you start to take risks. And this is why I will always say on my Chanel, never, never, never get black market silicone because it is not worth those risks. I know it feels or it sounds like it feels 
like it will bring you alleviation of dysphoria, but it will cause problems down the line. You're not actively addressing an issue, you're pushing that issue further down the line. Please don't get black market injections, just don't. And also we need to respect and listen to older transsexuals who will explain about hormones back in the day, who will explain about doctors back in the day. I might sound a little bit on my soapbox here and I really don't mean to cause offense, but a lot of conversations at the forefront of trans healthcare, trans identities and trans legal conversations are being had by people who are not functionally transitioning. And yes, while those people are valid, I do not believe that they should hold as much of the conversation as they are. And to actually further my point here, if you remove any and all references to active transsexualism being a medical issue and replace it with a let's say, crisis of spirit or crisis of lifestyle, trans people need access to safe healthcare and the pharmaceutical industry will not provide healthcare to a crisis of spirit or a crisis of lifestyle. But also that's on the cis ally counterparts who wish to invite these people constantly, the same people over and over and over and over and over again to speak on all trans issues. So it's a bit of a systemic issue here, bit of a systemic issue. And also there is an aspect of it of like, look at the circus. The most recent egregious example of this is Josh Sater being positioned as a trans activist who admitted that this was all allegedly just a social experiment, not really trans. Yet his views on transition and medical transition were often cited in male to female transgender discussions about healthcare and surgery. And I can safely say that as a slightly older trans person who's been transitioning for over 10 years, people like this do not speak for me and they never will. And I don't want to fulfill the role. I don't want to be an activist. I don't want to have to be an activist. I think it's actually, you, you require a certain amount of like inner stoicism to be able to be an activist because I could not put myself in the line of fire like that. I just find it a little bit insidious that we constantly see single voices for the trans community speaking as if everyone has the same journey and they don't. Surgery, hormones and transition was a part of my transgender journey as a transsexual woman. And I very rarely nowadays see that represented in media. It's very sorcery of the spectacle. But back to the story. About a year down the road. A year. Is when the nightmare really began. A year down the road. I woke up one oh morning gosh. to the whole left side of my face feeling like a boil. And all of a sudden, the left side of my face exploded. Oh God, nightmare fuel, girly wig. came out, it splattered all over the mirror. I mean, it was just oozing out, almost like lava. I thought I was getting, you know, a little cosmetic procedure in my face and my breasts. And instead, I was given black market injectables of industrial strength corking. Cork. There's so okay. many things that I've held back from doing just because of my fear of the reaction that they're going to have when they see me. Like I'll pull up somewhere like the supermarket and I'm sitting in my car feeling paralyzed like, oh God, here we go. And I'll like watch people pull up, slam the door and they're going in the store along the merry way. And I kind of look and I say, wow, you know that you have a place in this world. Me being able to get surgery will help me to feel a lot more comfortable so that I won't even think twice about going to the beach or for that matter, going anywhere in public. Oh, I do wonder. Oh, I do, I do wonder if they can actually do anything here because like, I thought it was black market silicone. It's actually caulk, like bathroom caulk, you know, like what you put between your tiles. That's insane. How dare that woman do that to this poor woman? I want to be perfect. I want to be perfect. Uh, our right, next here we go. patient Tiffany is Wiggs. a huge reality star. You remember the Flavor oh, Flav shows, Flavor of Love? They've had a bit of tweaking oh, since the know. last season, haven't that? they? Anyway, I saw some of this show and this, she's gonna be interesting. You actually had time to watch this show with- I, I actually took the time out to do something besides plastic surgery. Yeah. Oh, really? yeah. Yes. Oh, I don't know about guy. that. He seems a little bit like you actually watch reality TV. Like, mm, you are a part of the industry, Dr. Paul. Careful, Wigs. He obviously doesn't watch TV, he doesn't listen listen to music, he doesn't read any books or go to movies. He needs to go outside. He's a sometimes. vampire. Smell the coffee. Smell Hi, the Doctor. Your next patient's Hi, here, guys. Tiffany. Hi. How are you? Oh, she looks like a bubbly I'm lady. So What's going on with this? This is my, my healing helper. This wine will help me heal. Ding, oh. ding, 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 ding. I, to I told you <laughs> she there was we go. Cool, huh? She's really sassy. I like her. 
Let's get into some details. Yeah. Okay, is so she sexy? what's the thing or that's she really brought you here today? My breasts. So you've had breast surgery before, right? I right. have. This would be my third. Thus far, third. this has been a process for me. Right. I'm glamorous. I'm fabulous. But I need the rest of me to come into alignment with it. I have okay. so much extra skin. It's like elephant skin or something. Okay. Just because of the wrinkles and the yeah. dimpling. Oh elephant my gosh, skin. I hate it. We well, yeah. can see from the pictures skin. that you have right, the scar around the area. Yeah. And the areola has gotten a little bit yeah. maybe dilated. Well, I've always been huge nipple. Okay, they're out of yeah. proportion to the middle. Yeah, I was born Beat. needing breast implants just to catch up with my nipples. That's I'm quite glad that she's very open about it because large nipples are a thing that exists and people shouldn't be shamed for it. It's called a tubular breast. Oh, when the areolas breast. are dilated and the breast Dumb. base is narrow, tuber being a potato. It's the Greek word for t potato. And I'll to bet you a sweet piece. potato breast. Oh too. my goodness. You actually, really are freaky. I just know what these new cans and a new nose. Oh, the nose? Yes. Why are they the nose? This I've is... often wondered this. Where did that nickname come from for like breasts? Cans. Look at her cans. She's getting new cans. Two cans. Token. Why? Cans. Why is it called that? Cans. And not the art film festival, girl. I'll never stop making Spider Man movies. Tiffany did not mark anything on her paperwork indicating that she wanted a nose job. So the oh. thing that concerns me about my nose oh, is dear. that my nose leaks a lot. So basically you're telling me it's called rhinorrhea. <laughs> so you're saying, I know that's what it's called. I mean, we'll all examine you all and we'll take Rhinos. a peek. It's very cool. sensitive Should to I, the air. Do I have rhinorrhea? I'm just leaking, leaking, leaking. So I'm hoping hmm. that the leaking will stop. Okay, Nobody so the perfect leaking. distance leaking between the clavicles Gosh. to the nipple oh, is 21 Oh, her breasts are, are quite a size. You are 32. So you're 11. 11 centimeters lower than you should be. Yes. Tiffany's previous doctor went too far. She has extremely large breast implants with very stretched out skin and a lot sinks. of droopiness. She can need a lot of surgery. Oh, Look at that, yeah. that would work, wow. right? Yes. Look at that skin there, yes. that would work there. But I will tell you, the more I have to raise you, the greater the amount of tension around the implant. And the greater the amount of tension, the greater chance the scar will widen okay. and the greater the risk. This is not Unless an you easy case. Dangle upside okay. down for this your entire vanity. healing process? This is a really significant breast deformity that needs correcting. Oh. All right. Let me just look inside Gosh, your nose. Okay. I just want to see how much cartilage you have oh, in there. A beep, beep. Oh, you actually have a deviated septum. Oh, what does that mean? It's the cartilage and bone between your nostrils. Mm -hmm. It's pushed over to Ooh, I really your, feel that. To your, to your left. Usually an African-American septum is very straight. Tiffany's septum is deviated. If I nail her nose, her dripping will stop and she'll breathe a lot better. Oh. I mean, there's really no reason why I can't fix her nose while Tiffany's under anesthesia getting a breast lift by Tiffany. Oh, right, yeah. okay, okay. So we're, we're experiencing here like the swan light. We've got a boob job and a nose job. Under normal circumstances, I would say is quite extreme but i actually think that in a case of revision that seems is sensible the word i'm looking for no. No. doable doable like it's going to be a long healing process because anything you have done to the chest means that your arms are kind of like a bit weakened and a bit limp but like you can still clean and like be happy even if you're a bit swollen it's when you have jaw and this and then stomach and legs and lipo and then the nose and it's, it's then you start to get a little bit like this is too far too much surgery in one go i would still say it's it's probably quite a lot but it's not unheard of you know it's not unheard of it's not like absolute wacky carols at it again girly wigs it's wackadoodle time a lot of surgery and you're gonna stay over in the aftercare facility for a night oh treat me like a princess yeah, <laughs> i love that there you she's, go she's got I'm a lot excited, of personality i'm oh. anxious maybe oh, i do I'll like finally have the look that i've dark always wavy been hair. Meant to i think have. that's her like that's her my name is christina god hello christina call me mrs potato head oh I grew up in a small town in Maryland, and I was the middle child the middle. of a loving mother and Mrs. Potato incredible Head. I father. To call you that. When I was 10 years old, it was a blizzard of 1994, the and we didn't have school that day. So my siblings and I decided we wanted to make a homemade candle. One thing led to another, and we ended up taking our homemade candle outside to go try to light it with just a regular match. And the wind was too blowing too hard, and so we couldn't light it. We're like, oh, this is this sucks. So. We went inside the garage where there were several, I guess, cans of kerosene. And my brother was like, well, this will this will help it. And I just remember this huge ball of flame came on me and 
I pulled a Home Alone trick and I just like ducked my face into the snow. The fire went off and the damage had already been done. I got third degree. The 90s was a different time, my lovelies, because watch your kids. If you know that your children are making candles, watch them like a hawk. My gosh. And just think, lots of like older people now are like, oh, when we were younger, we had scared of scores, yeah, we had none of all that. As they say, my loves, health and safety is quite often written in blood. Burns on my chin, first degree around my cheeks first and my hands. The recovery process was brutal. I, I mean, imagine. I was in a hospital. I just remember wanting to go back to school. I just wanted to go be part of the talent show and I wanted to do all these things and it was depressing. Over the last 20 years, I've been through 10 reconstructive surgeries. Ten I've surgeries. been all over. I've been to Mexico, New York, Boston. The doctor in New York City was the lead doctor in the entire world of how to do a full flap surgery which is the procedure in which she would take my skin somewhere else on my body and put it a on my grind? chin. The Gosh. doctor ended up putting an implant into my chin that was just too big oh, for no. my face, and it ended up making my jawline look a lot more square. Wow, is okay. Is this your first time at this restaurant? Gosh. I've been here once before and I really, really enjoyed it. You know that we're pretty picky. Picky people over here, so we're like, you know that that's we're pretty good picky. for them. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Hello. So the issue here is the implant is too big. Gosh, that's, do you know, I thought we were going to be going somewhere else with that story, but I'm glad that it's, I mean, I'm, I'm not a doctor. I don't know if it would be straightforward. I imagine because the skin is of a different texture because it's from elsewhere on the body, that could potentially lead to additional complications. But it sounds like an implant switch and maybe some other like minor things. But uh, I'm not going to speak to say, my loves. I'm not a surgeon, wig. Are you sure? Mentally, the toll that it took on me, it wasn't so much about me. It was about the deterioration of the people around me. I started noticing a lot more stress um, between my parents' relationship. So it was hard. Oh, that's my so parents awful. ended up getting divorced when I was 18 years old. 18. It's been a couple years since my last procedure. I already did the research and I found two extraordinary, you know, doctors. We did go to a very famous doctor. I know. And he could not do what needed to be done. My life has been to make sure that my daughter is going to be okay, that she's going to be happy. She oh, is my shit. daughter and I got to make sure that they are very well taken care of. That's I just want to go back to true. have That's the same look that I had when I was younger. Oh, Mika, I really haven't done anything different than any parents would have done for their daughter in the same situation. Okay. Whatever it takes to get my daughter to where she's going to live a, a full and happy life. I'm oh, OK. So this is actually quite so nice. Scared. I know. Dare I, I say it? I give you the best, baby. I know, and I thank you, and I really appreciate that, Pops. Thank you. Going through this this whole process will be a healing mechanism well, for my entire family, something. not just myself. My father has been extremely supportive. He feels major guilt, but he did everything throughout the years to make me feel like I am not different from anybody else. That's He's good. Yes, because you're person, not. And you're I, I don't not. Want to you have a story. A hundred percent. New chapter. Yeah. I think that that's what what's to come. Yeah. I am very ready to no longer have to deal with the size of my like potato head. I love you, Sophie. Not I love potato you. potato head. I don't think you have a potato head. Oh, 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 oh. That's very what someone else has called her before and now it's stuck, isn't it? I hate that so much, Carly Wake. Hello, Biscuit. Hello, Biscuit. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Is it Mr. Biscuit, please? Oh, is it Mr. Biscuit? Hello, baby. Hello. Oh, yes. With your little baldy bit. Yes, you got a little baldy bit. Oh, dear. Little blood test for Biscuit. You seem a bit cold. Are you cold? You can't be cold. You've got so much fluff. The circle of wigs. Oh, the end of it. Good. Oh. Take to me, getting into med school was like one of the greatest moments of my life, truly. And look where you are right now. I can yeah, imagine. Sitting next to you. Oh, there's a you filter. Have some, yeah, good there was this one there's time we were operating, we were doing a heart surgery case, and I'm a med student, so I'm holding. There's a little filter that they're using to film here and you can tell because the light across his cheek is blooming what i mean when i say blooming is that there's a very slight like mist if you know what i mean a mist so it could be a black mist filter 
Could be a white mist filter, could be a satin filter. Don't quite know. Could be a Dior filter, but I highly doubt they're using that. You know, things for a long time. And no kidding, all of a sudden, I look down in the wound, and there's this green thing that I swear to you looks like broccoli. And the head surgeon goes, what the F is that? The co-surgeon who had just gone to the cafeteria is going, she had broccoli in her she mouth. She dropped broccoli underneath her mask onto the heart. Ah. The woman was too stunned to speak. That's got to be a fake story because I can't possibly believe that you would just be like, ah, ha, she dropped broccoli on her girl. That is absolutely abhorrent. I'm going to be viscerally sick. Fart one out, girl. Ah. Hi, Welcome to Girly Weeks. Dr. Nelson. Dr. Carlos, I'm going to see you. It's a pleasure. Hello. Have a seat. Hello, please. Tell us a little bit about what Your happened. Your wig. At 10 years old, I was in a freak fire accident. Since then, I've been through 10 operations. That is a flap. Yes. yes? Mm -hmm. And where did that flap come from? What part of your body? My back. The thing oh. you notice with Christina right away is this flap is too big. It looks like she's wearing the helmet with the chin strap. Less is more in Christina's chin. The doctor okay. wanted to change the shape a little bit even though I was happy with my shape. He put a huge implant so my face turned really square and big. Since then I've had two separate doctors try to remove all the implant that was in there. This has been very difficult on your family. Because this is something that I will never wish on my worst enemy. Yeah, this is your baby. Yeah. Yeah. And here, we are to support her. This is her decision. Ooh, I want to make sure she's going to be okay. Oh, yeah. he's got the tissues. That's <laughs> nice. There you go, girly wig. My dad is not an emotional person. He's a very strong person, and I didn't think it would affect him so much because he actually teared up, and I have not seen that since, I think, since I was, the day I was burned. We could change this and debulk the TV this on these bring both sides. Out we would design. have a significant improvement. Okay. It may seem like a very simple operation just to make a few little incisions okay. on the outside and debulk this flap, but it is anything but simple. Okay, so I was because completely wrong. I have to eat my own wig. The whole thing is going to turn black, fall off, and die. Oh. Doctor, when you well, do debulking, we what exactly are okay. you talking about? You actually make incisions along her scars uh -huh. and lift it up, and you literally cut out trim trim a section of the I fat see. out yeah, no, 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 like we would, of steak we would like a piece of steak, steak. we would yeah, we you piece of steak. Steak. your mom just called you a piece of steak <laughs> <laughs> really yes yeah, if they can do something to fix the contouring maybe i'll be able to smile again without disguising my huge enormous chin Okay, okay, all right, so we've got Thank something, so something's yeah. happening. Oh, uh, Christina, go! a major improvement. Paul and I can do something here. Teamwork Gosh, fetus. plastic surgery oh. is <laughs> wild, isn't it? Absolutely bonk de Leonkers, girl. Philola's wig! Oh, Liege Waffles. Who's this? Hi, welcome to Czech Yellow Bar. Oh, thank you, thank you. Well, I'm expecting my cousin. Yes. So, uh, yeah, she's a little late. So, um, can I just order two coffees yes, for of now course. and until she gets here? Absolutely. Would you like a glass of water, too? Um, oh, that would be wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. I've definitely had moments of loneliness since. Why is they put, Yeah, I feel like they're kind of. Oh, that's a bit more flattering. I feel like they're, they've been a bit like, we're going to put you in a coffee shop in public and just have a public section with you because we don't get this with other contestants contestants guests on this show interesting production choice there they're trying to be like well well let's see what other people how they react to her is that what they're trying to do face i was kind of putting myself in a prison and it was because of the fear or are we of having like a mock emotional breakthrough moment like on this show looks of disdain just because oh of no the way I, I was look. right what about the content of my character Hi, Mom. I can't believe this. I'm at the, here at the cafe where I was supposed to meet Tanya, and she's not here. I've been here for like 15, 20 minutes. No, and I'm kind of disgusted and hurt. The woman that gave me illegal injections, she is currently in jail. Not because of me, though. When people hear that I didn't pursue charges, they also look at me like, are you crazy? It is what it is. This has happened. So it's like, instead of that, I decided I'm going to use my energy to educate the world about this. 
That's actually a very good point. And another point of it as well is that taking someone to court costs money in certain circumstances as well. And it can cost quite a lot of money. But to transform your platform into education is actually a really commendable thing to do. That's quite beautiful. I've been helping people, especially through sharing my story. If one person is touched by it and impacted it in a positive way, I've made a, a great difference. Me? You know, I'm going You've to made the a difference to, to me. Consultation. Yeah, well, yeah, my face and my, my breast and everything. yeah, everything, everything basically. Believe it or not, Why I actually have, do have, have this conversation in public. That, pursue me but it's more of like this fantasy type thing i actually had this one guy tell me that being with me was like being with an exotic dragon and i looked at him and said i don't know whether to slap you or hug you what i should have done when he said that was open my mouth and breathe fire on him yes i agree I'm human, okay? I'm a human being. But yeah, no, I, I, you know, I would, I would like my Prince Charming. Any guys out there like what they see? Give me a call, call me. Okay, love you. Love you too. Okay, bye. Oh. Oh, that was a very interesting section. Are they going like? They seem to be. I'm not gonna lie. I'm delaying I'm a little her. Bit nervous, oh, her but skin I'm is gorgeous. I've Who are these twinks? Been a little fake on the exterior, but real way. Haven't we all go? My heart, yeah, my heart so. is the only real organ in my body. Look at the hair. Dude. Get off my hair. Nice. Get off my hair. It's nice, man. It's really it's nice. Re it's really you there. Uh, shut up. This surgery couldn't have came at a better time in my life. Oh, we're I having an uplifting moment for Tiffany Weeks. I know that these two doctors are going to just give color. me that extra edge. Go, just go. Metallic, maybe a Mac metallic. Okay, so something. I'm going to start the rib. And then we'll do the fascia at the same time so we can rock and roll. When Paul and I do simultaneous surgery, it's a very complicated orchestra of moves. And in which sometimes we, have to make we, sure we kiss. both enhance and not interfere with each other. So okay. let's make sure we give her a good All operation. Right. She's had some crappy surgery in the past, if you ask me. The plan for Tiffany is to start by harvesting rib cartilage through an incision under the breast. Oh, then while I'm using that to work, build up the bridge of her nose oh, and fix I her see. deviated septum, Terry will be swapping out her implants plants and giving her a breast lift. Okay. So start now right, here we go, started. curly wigs. First doesn't bit of surgery, right. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Off we go. Side insertion. the lady. So at this stage, we were just getting down to the top of the rib. Looks like it's a little bit calcified. When we use the word calcification, what we're saying is that cartilage, which is moldable or bendable, becomes very hard and we can't carve it. We need to be able to carve cartilage to put it inside the nose. Unless that's is, bone that right mean? there. How it goes? The cartilage bone is actually a little bit more medial than we thought. The longer I stand there and the time is tick-tocking away, the more I realize the less time I'm going to have on her complicated breasts. Because there's a limit to how much anesthesia a person can tolerate. Oh, in I see. One Gosh, session. we're getting storyline. Are they gonna be able to feel clean coming off? You don't want to keep a patient on anesthesia too long because all it does is increase the risks of something bad happening. Yes, How's my facial surgery was okay. ten and a half hours. So the hours. rib is coming out right now. Oh I had my to go god! A little bit more laterally. How far laterally do you have to go? Seven okay. centimeters. Could you do me a favor? Could you measure the width of the breast? About fourteen and a half or so. Okay, so you had to lift up seven of that fourteen and a half that lower blood supply might be impaired. You know, as a surgeon, I'm having a bit of an oh crap moment. Oh dear. Paul did more than I anticipated. That risks the blood supply to the nipple, so I'm concerned. Oh no. Not to mention oh, the gosh. anesthesia. So you Tomorrow have it's... how much longer on the nose? About a good four and a half hours. And I have We're about to... four and a half. So that would take us over eight hours of anesthesia. And there's the potential problem with the blood supply to my nipple. It's not happening today. Oh. There's not going to be enough time to do a good job on both the breasts and the nose. It just makes the little hairs stand up the back of my neck. We're used to stressful environments in surgery, but we always have to keep our cool and do the right thing for the patient. Let's not do it. Then the thing is, when she wakes up, we'll have that discussion with her. Oh, gosh. Right. Well, we've never seen anything like that before, have we? Just goes to show, even with a surgery that you are kind of assuming will be quite straightforward, I do find it kind of strange though, the idea of like two plastic surgeons working on you in like a normal everyday environment might not necessarily happen. Yeah, gosh, wild.
kind of puts things into perspective a little bit for me because I had 10 hours of plastic surgery for my facial feminization and that was under anesthetic for the whole time. I wonder if there were conversations like this happening around me. Oh, how, what existential dread, girly wigs. I want to be goiter. Right, Christina's surgery day. Oh. Here to see Dr. Debrow and Dr. Nassif. Thank you. Can she means in business. Sure. I'm, I'm here actually to do this. I'm less nervous than everybody else. My dad, I do wonder why it's called a chin flap. flap. My stepmom says she Is cannot there not like a more science Christina? word than just flap? I can take you back. There's something but quite un, unglamorous about the word flap, isn't there? Like, what colour is your flap? It's very... no. I think that um, once I see that I'm calm, at least on the outside, <laughs> then they'll get better. Okay. Oh dear. Good morning. Hey. There she is. How are you doing? driverless wig. I'm, I'm good. So right now it looks like Christina kind of has a football helmet with that bulky chin strap. What we really want to do is take that bulky chin strap off. You know what the thing is? She's had 10 off. operations before us. What makes this any different? Okay, Why are we any better than all the surgeons? Well, no, the point is no one has actually tried to excise and contour skin. Right. So the plan for oh. Christina's surgery today is dividing Christina's chin flap into three sections. The central section we're going to leave intact. This is going to be our basic blood supply. Oh. These so two they... areas on the outer portions, we're going to lift them up and debulk them, removing a lot of the tissue, yes. and, and then... then remove some skin and try to get it tighter along her jawbone to give her a normal-looking appearance. Oh. Yeah. Oh, well, first of all, let's it's almost like a chin blood. plasty, but not oh, with yeah, the bone, with the skin. This sucker's thick. These cases are never easy. I'm concerned that the skin is so tight, we can't narrow it at all. Yes. And come out and tell the family we didn't even make any positive changes. That well, is a real possibility. Yeah, that's the issue, isn't it? Because the skin, the skin on your chin and on your neck is quite flexible in comparison to the skin on your back, if you think about it. Which is why any skin graft kind of has to be taken from very sensible areas that aren't going to cause restriction. Which is kind of difficult sometimes. Kind of difficult, depending on the case. So, oh! So we can whack this whole thing off. Don't say whack. Can I do this, you mind? You do whack it, it on, whack it off, anyway. whack it off. There's a lot of scar tissue. We're able so to blue. remove it and thin it out. Cinnamon. Now we just have to remove some of this extra flap and make everything smaller. Flap. That little bit of paranoia, though, is still there. Yeah, I know. Well, if you're not paranoid, you're not safe. All right, let's look at it. Well, there's a huge difference. I mean, there's a huge difference. That's a spicy meatball, right? I love the contour. I think Terry and I nailed it. All right. Okay. You're a very, very sexy man. So are you, my friend. Seriously. Day, day, baby. Right. Okay. So the reason I'm late, I got up at, I kid you not, at 4.10 a.m. You got up that early? To do a facelift before I got here and upper left. And you think that that was hard, what you did this morning? Yeah. Wait till you see our next case. Oh, really? Good morning, doctors. Nice. This is your next morning. patient, Raji. Hi. Hello. <laughs> it's nice to meet right, you, Dr. Nelson. Nice. Yes, it's just such an honor. I'm with the crown burgundy crown. wig. Wow. Plastic surgeon. Well, thank you. But I can't believe I'm here. I almost have to pinch myself. <laughs> this is almost like I'm at plastic surgery mecca. Yeah, I'm just going through I so many guess different so. emotions. Especially back I'm in this day after the first scene. season it aired. So, how do you pronounce your name? It's Raji, but Raji. some people say Rajay, like Jack K. It is good. Rajay. As long as they're saying my name, I'm happy. That's right, right? <laughs> She's sort of so like a sweet huggable. and lovely. Very sweet, very lovely, very welcoming, isn't it? Just like, it's that phrase, isn't it? Why do bad things happen to nice people? Little teddy bear, even though she has these masses on her face that, frankly, I don't even see after talking to her for about five minutes. Should I first get That's on the table sweet. and do a table dance? You might like that. <laughs> I would sweet. like that. Comedy has helped me to get through a lot of this. If I was to sit and really if think about everything I've been through, I would boohoo cry all the time. As I always say, right. you've got to have a laugh, haven't you? Otherwise, just cry solemn all day, every day, sobbing. Hey, George Burns lived to a hundred laughing, so maybe that'll work Don't for me. George first? <laughs> Give George us a little George history of what happened and, you know, and what you're trying to do. I'm a transgender is. person, and usually when you're transitioning, hormones only do so much. That's true. It was word of mouth in the community that there was someone in our community that did the pumping and I had seen some girls that had gone to her and um, they looked beautiful. Pumping parties are when you go to someone's residence but obviously not in the medical office and have whatever it is injected into your face and your body. You don't know what you're getting. That's exactly so the problem. I went to get my face done first. What did she inject first? Well, concrete. 
Samet. When I had the first surgery done, they sent Cement. samples to the lab. Cement. And the results of that was that I had industrial strength silicone, which is really a kind of cement. How long ago was that? It was in 2003. Okay. One morning I woke up and my entire left side of my face was like a boil. Yep. And I was in the mirror and all of a sudden, explosion. Oh. Medical grade silicone injections in this country is illegal. It is never a good idea to go to someone's home and have caulking material injected into your face. Why don't we go ahead and take you into an exam room? We've Do seen I... something very similar, which was with cooking oil. It's the same thing, like foreign bodies in the body do not do well, which is why we don't inject like silicone. For breast implants, for example, you have soft silicone encased in harder silicone and then that's in inserted. It's just so shocking to hear, isn't it? Just raw injection, like that's wild. Get naked now? Not right here, not now. Oh, no, not yet. <laughs> not yet. Okay. No. <laughs> because I'm ready. <laughs> bubbly lady, Rogers, one bubbling of the about. You go to medical school. You want to help people like that big hearted, wonderful, gentle person. I'm just hoping we can help her today. Let's start with the face and okay. see what we see. Okay. So, on this right. side, you have one granuloma here, not that big. A granuloma. You have a second one here, but it's, they're still pretty soft. Feel these too. And that's deep, by the way. Yeah, this one is probably sitting on top of a nerve that goes directly to your upper lip that elevates your upper lip. Mm. And the danger behind removing this one is that nerve could be injured and you could be left to look like this. Oh, you know, yeah. you'd rather have no. this than no. that, right? Yeah. Oh, oh my God. God. A girl likes to talk. I don't know. I would be devastated if something happened to my She's lip. She's a chatsy no. Kathy. No way. I can't do it. Let's go ahead and look at the chest and oh, see what's going on there. Interesting. Are we having... So, raise is this going to be a no? Okay, so your, oh, so the nipples are underneath. So what I'm feeling is these scarred nodules throughout the entire breast, and that stretched your skin out so much that your nipple is now underneath. I mean, this is actually your natural breast here. This is just stretched skin. There are always options, and one of your options is to literally remove both breasts. Oh my God. I will. Oh gosh, that's so sad. That is so sad. This is one of the most extreme cases we've seen on Botched. And I feel like it's going to be very like word of warning, like word of caution, like just don't go for it. Just don't go for back alley injections. Like they're cheap for a reason. Even medical professionals with the best experience in the world can have problems. And then of course you end up with less regulated people. Like we've seen recently in this country, we had a young mum die from a liquid BBL. No procedure is worth that risk. Oh my God. We don't Which, really know what's in there. And if we like start- Removing breast tissue is a lot for anyone. But obviously if you've gone through transition to have breast tissue and then someone is saying, we now have to take it out. <sighs> I don't know how I would cope with that. If we start opening Raji up and let loose Pandora's box, we could activate an inflammatory process that could result in a really bad super infection they're and not... she could die. Yeah, they're not gonna. The only way to fix Raji's breasts truthfully, is to remove them. The truth is, you're not really having a dramatic functional problem or a medical problem from this. I don't think a mastectomy is a good option. No. A double mastectomy, to me, would be like taking a great part of my womanhood away. Hell no. You're not taking these breasts. I mean, these look like they're actually not actively inflamed. Yeah, they're so dormant. Just leave them alone. It's dormant. Leave them alone. Operating on Raji is risky. She'll get more tissue defects. She can have an infection. It can seep through your bloodstream. Nothing good will come out of it. If anything, I think we'll make her worse. I think the take home message for today is if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But I will tell you something, we will be here. Okay. 
anytime you need us 24 7 if you develop a problem from any of these nodules from any of these injections you contact us and we will take care of it and help you fix the problem oh that's you very know, sweet I'm okay with the doctor saying that they're not able to really that's do so anything sweet. for me at this moment but also know that I can reach out to these doctors if I need help I hope they the stick to their to word me. I feel like Dr. Dubro will Bye. because very ingrained in the ally community Gosh, that was heart-wrenching, wasn't it, my lovelies? For a split second, I thought we were going to be able to see something, but I also fully understand the case of sometimes leaving something alone does less harm than interfering with something. Totally get that. Gosh, that was a lot, wasn't it, my loves? That was a lot. Ta Hello, Mr. Biscuit, it's Biscuit Boy. Hello, Mr. Biscuit, it's Biscuit Wigs. Mr. Mr. Biscuit, Biscuit Wig. Are you cold? <laughs> Oh, here she is. Tiffany. Hi. How are you? Oh, good. I'm better now. I miss you guys. If this is your good, I'd like I to like, see I you. like this kind of look you here. Uh, oh, post-anesthetic pain Physically, medication. Physically, it's a little difficult for me to stay focused. Gonna be loopy I don't know on what they gave me, but whatever it was, is just really doing the job. Mm. You're so cute. Did you just hear that? She said I was cute. Wait a minute. <laughs> you know First, I, don't want to I didn't realize cute. you couldn't see. That's a problem. I'm, I'm cute and he's goofy. You know, obviously, do you have any botched eye procedures? <laughs> Hold on a second. I don't want to scare you or anything, but... See what I mean? He's cute. Oh, not so cute, is he? <laughs> Tiff, to me, it's like this. It's like, aye. <laughs> <laughs> Paul and I have to There's something about being in like aftercare that makes you like really cute and silly and like cute and small. I felt so like cute and tiny and small. And then like as soon as I healed, I was like, ah, oh, I feel <laughs> and gorgeous again. There's something about like being in bed and a bit like healing and that you're like tiny and small. I don't know how to explain it, but I think you get the idea. No. Deliver the bad news to Tiffany that oh, we yes, didn't do both news. of the surgeries. It's a lot easier to deliver that kind of bad news to someone who's on post-op pain meds. I didn't do your breast surgery. I've noticed. Right. Yeah. I'm sure you noticed that. There's a really, really good reason why okay. we decided not to do that. As he was doing your nose, we realized that the operation was going to go a lot longer oh, than we thought. Really? Your nose was a lot more complex than... I thought it was going to be. I wanted to take as long as I needed. We didn't even want to risk going into the wee hours of anesthesia. We wanted to make sure that everything was safe for you. At the end of the day, being a really good doctor is doing no harm. Yes, he isn't that did something really special oath? to your nose. He did. Yeah. As soon as I woke up, all the girls said, your nose is so cute. But You're still like natural. Remember that, though. Yes. Natural. You're so cute. So here's the plan. First fact, of all, you need to recover. Too dissimilar. I'm willing to do this in a couple of weeks. That's when it's safe. Okay. Oh, all right. Oh, yeah. All right. Okay. Bye -bye. All right. She's got light at the edge of the wig, my loves. Oh, that's nice. It's the day after my surgery, and I'm really curious to see what my new scars will look like. Okay. 20 years. Is it? 20 years. Since Ooh. we began surgery. Oh. One Very interesting case. instant in time. Ooh. 20 years later. Oh. Dad and stepmom have been very involved throughout this entire process so far, and I'm feeling great. I, I, I don't know. It's amazing. Yes. Let's well, hope. I don't miss having to wear that great. chin thing. You look so good. Very restrictive. Yeah. I feel so unfair. Well, then we just have to make sure that this whole thing went fantastic. Okay. The okay. goal was to make the shape better, and if we've accomplished that, what we've achieved think? an awful lot. What do we think? Oh. <laughs> You are losing a few strands of hair. Houses keep falling down. Let's see here. It looks good. Oh my oh. god. It looks so good. And this is swollen. This is the swollen version of these. Less than 24 mm. hours. It's swollen. But the contour is fantastic. Should we get her the good old man? Yeah. Oh, it is a lot more <laughs> contoured. Oh! Oh, yeah, it does look a little bit better. I haven't oh. seen this shape 20 for years. more than 20 years. Yeah. How can you get emotional? Go in the big! Oh, gosh. It looks so much better. Reality it's TV, girls. Improvement. I am so but with a with heart. I feel really good. Oh, God. So now, what an emotional we're not day. The yet, because the area on the right, it's bruised. We're going to keep the compression off it to not allow any blood to be impaired. Blood Dogs, blood. you're amazing. Okay. What does that well, mean? Well, let's... Oh, to not I, allow I any blood to be impaired. I hope to hear okay. you say that in two weeks. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Right. There Gosh, are no okay. ways to describe Wait, how I, I want to say. ecstatic I feel. It's only been day one. Who knows what, you know, what 
it will happen oh, in time. Wild. Oh, wild. Oh, my gosh. Transformative here in the studio. Absolute lust. A pelican. Six it's weeks been okay. 10 years since I've had a decent shape on my chin. It's always kind of held me back a little the bit. Forest. But today is the day. I'm very excited to see my family oh, showcase my new look. This is yeah. going to be a big difference. Oh, a reveal, a swan yeah, reveal really in the pond. Excited. I'm so excited for Christmas. Yeah. Okay, come on, Gally, make. Heart of gold, so oh, now the face is going to match. <laughs> oh my God, Mommy, Chrissy! Oh my God, Chrissy! Oh 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 she looks so beautiful. Look at you. Oh my gosh, Chrissy! Gosh, that's look amazing. You. Oh, you look so oh Jot fractious joy. Fantastic. Oh. The shape in her beautiful chin is come back. Mm. I'm the happiest dad on earth. And oh, she'll still gosh. even be a bit swollen at six weeks because <laughs> chin here. stuff Thank takes you so ages. Much for obviously for all your ages. Oh, sweetheart. Oh. We all love you so much, honey. I'm so happy. I'm so, so happy. The look that my father is giving me, it's She's, a look that she, I've never seen before. And her because it's jawline of kind of matches a similar shape to her family. She doesn't really have to worry about me as much anymore something that I'll never forget. That's, I don't know, I'm just I'm so happy. I you mean, look the doctors so are really happy. I'm so really happy. beautiful. I'm genuinely really, really happy. You look gorgeous, honey. Yeah, so. You I deserve know. this and more. I think we are. Oh. I think we're good to go, darling. Yeah. Good to go. Don't tell Eurovision. Before I looked like Mrs. Potato Head, that is I had a wild. square jaw and a weird texture. Now I look more like myself. I feel like a literally a big weight has that come is, off. What an my incredible chin. transformation! It feels incredible. I'm, I mean, I'm like I'm shaking right now because I'm just so like happy, and I can't believe that finally I can smile and like. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're so beautiful. I'm so happy, Christina. Yes, we can. Oh, oh that's nice. Oh, that's nice, isn't it, girly wigs? Oh, we've got more. Okay, what's what's this, this last little bit? What, what's the? Oh, is it New York's reveal? Is she having a reveal? There was acid in that fountain. Today Eight weeks. is yes. about closing a major oh, chapter in my life. A few weeks a after I had my rhinoplasty, I went back in and got my breasts done. Oh! Every ounce of pain was worth So she's it. had the bobage. Like there's nothing. The bobage and the rhinoplage. And I cannot wait to share oh, that. We, oh, with this my is friend. very swan, isn't it? I, for one, am so excited to see how the staircase descend. At the end of the day, I just want to see well, like a dress. Because you know what? I just want hey, to dance. Hello! <laughs> Damn! You know? Agreed. Oh, why aren't you making it to the planet? That's a gorgeous dress, yes. Oh, a woman has arrived! Yes. And how low their jaws have dropped. It's oh, she the looks expensive. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Where's Tiffany at? Ah. The dress, she was all up in there. Pam got the, the chest all like, and the nose was like, I'm like, <laughs> The HBIC is back in the building! She certainly is. Before, my breasts were hard. They weren't invited. Oh my for gosh, that's a wild but now, transformation. I'm knocking down doors. They stand up and they're just ready to take on the world. I thank you guys that so much for this love. <sighs> I've been on Love's such a long journey. My nose used to leak like Niagara Falls, but now there's no more Very. tripping. I'm not a 10, I'm more like a 12. Very natural yeah. result as well. Yeah. Just a really she slight a She has a, a new pep in her step. She's looking amazing. I cannot wait to see- A pep to bismol in her shoe. You, but the world. Today is about Pep me having step. what I always wanted. I'm finally and here. the gays Thank go wild, valley. girl. And knowing that every woman should just feel beautiful. Are y'all happy? Mm. Having Dr. Nasty and Dr. Debro put my physical where my mental is, it's time for me to go to work. Everybody loves New York, don't you? H-B-I-C! HPLC. HPLC? Right, that's it, my loves. That's the end of the wig. I've got s some thoughts. Wow, what a roller coaster today's episode was. It's like they got a new storyline producer between season one and season two, and we're like, we're really, you see those heartstrings? We're gonna pull on them, my lovelies. We're gonna make people cry.
try. And you know what? They almost got me. I had a little moment there, a brewing of emotion, shall we say, to warm my cold, dark heart. I actually did like, I actually do cuss a little. I did like how quite a lot of this episode was reserved for almost like breaking down barriers of expectation. I really liked that. I feel like more reality TV needs to showcase people's stories as a way of breaking normality, so to speak, like treating people like people. My God, I know that sounds absolutely bonkers because I would never go out of my way to make people feel terrible around me, but I just feel like it's an overlooked aspect of reality and reality TV. Well, my lovelies, let me know what you think about what we've seen in today's episode of Botched, because what a wild start to this new series. Is that my little biscuit? I feel very popular today. Very popular today, biscuit. And with that, my lovelies, it's time for the Patreons. You can see yourself scrolling past on the screen right here. Can't they, biscuit? Yes. Today's Luxaria Lab subscriber shout out goes to Kit Kitty Kit Kit. Thank you so much for subscribing to my second channel here on YouTube, my lovelies, Luxaria Labs. If you want to be in with the chance of being featured in my next video's YouTube shout out, make sure you subscribe to that channel. It is linked in the comments below. And as always, my loves, I want to say a massive thank you to my top tier Patreons. Morgan LeVay, Orkosomoji, Ariadia X, Asgardians, Becky Johnson, Beebles32, Cameron Pittman, Shell Herman, ContraPoints, Finn Dunham, James A's and Girl, Jenny Jenny, Jenny Wood, Larissa Says Relax, Leanne Jones, Lenore, Les Banana, Marzipan, Mo Sherman, Miss Kiss, Paola Rivera, Sky Dorim, Steffi Tech, TNS Mum, and Taylor Martin. And with that, my loves, I think I'm going to leave it on the note of... Be nice. My God, be nice to people. Be nice.